All right, folks, I'm going to go, uh, I don't know, as quick as I can here. So uh, 18, let's see, I want two factors uh, that would multiply together to give me 18 and would add together to give me nine. So let's see, how about six times three? So six times three gives me 18 and six plus three gives me nine. So I have X plus six, X plus three, all equals zero. So X equals negative six, X equals negative three. Over here, I always check to see when I see something like this, like perfect square, I got seven, I've got two X when I take the square root of four X squared. If I multiply two X times seven, I get 14 X. If I double that, I get 28 X. So this is definitely 2x plus 7 squared equals 0. Square root both sides, I've got 2x plus 7 equals 0. Now I, well, I didn't need to square root both sides. I could just say what makes this 0 right here. Sorry. I moved the 7 to the other side. I get 2x equals negative 7. I divide by 2. I get x equals negative 7 divided by 2. That's my answer there. I had two answers over here. Why do I only have one answer on number 16? Well, that's because the vertex would be touching over here just at one spot at, at negative 3.5. Okay, it's seven, negative 7 halves. Uh, let's see. I would move the 9x uh, squared to the right side so that it's positive 9x squared. And then it sure looks like a perfect square again. Perfect square trinomial. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 9x squared is 3x. So it is, it's 3x plus 5 quantity squared because 3x times 5 is 15x. And double that, you get 30x. You definitely have the middle term, right? So what's going to make 3x plus 5 equal to 0? Well, if I move the 5 to the other side, I get negative 5. I divide by 3 and I get negative 5 thirds. I hope you're getting all these correct. Number 18. Uh, uh, you know, I don't want a negative here, but we'll deal with that in a second. If I move the 8x over uh, to the other side, I get negative x squared plus 8x minus 12 equals 0. Now I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1. I'll make a little note of that right out here. Multiply everything by negative 1, and it would become x squared minus 8x plus 12 equals 0. Now I make my little table and I say, okay, well, what numbers multiply together give me 12 and add together give me negative 8? Well, how about negative 2 times negative 6? So that works out. Check mark. I add those together and I get x minus 2, x minus 6 equals 0. My two solutions are 2 and 6. Okay, so here we go. Next one. Uh, you know, I don't have a middle term here. So I could take the 36, like divide both sides by 36, like classic. Let's isolate the variable. And I can do that. And I get 121 over 36. Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Square root of this side, square root of this side. I know fractions can be intimidating, but you can just take the square root of the numerator and the denominator separately. And you get W equals plus or minus, plus or minus, uh, 11 over 6, because the square root of 121 is 11, square root of 36 is 6. Done. Uh, let me circle that uh, right there. Okay. This one, same thing as that one over there, divide by 25. But 25 goes into 100 four times. So I get 4 equals W squared. I take the square root of both sides. I get plus or minus 2. I'm done, right? In uh, probably five seconds on that one. Okay, x squared minus 1. Well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move the 1 to the other side, divide by 64. I get x squared equals 1 64th. I take the square root of both sides, and I get plus or minus 1 8th, because I can take the square root of the 1, take the square root of 64. Here comes number 22. I'm going to do the same thing. Move the 9 16 to the other side, divide by 4. I, I'm going to do this a little slower. I get 4y squared equals 9 16 When you divide the four to the right side, it's really the same thing as multiplying the denominator over here by four. So I end up with nine over 64 down, down here. So I get, I get y squared equals nine over 64. Why is it the same thing as multiplying by four in the denominator? Well, let's think about that. I had nine sixteenths and I'm dividing by four. When you have a fraction divided by a number, you multiply multiply by the reciprocal of what you're dividing by. So I'm multiplying by one fourth. Notice four times 16 
and one times nine. So really we have just the numerator divided by four times the denominator. That's where the, the 64 comes from in the denominator. Take the square root of both sides. I get y equals plus or minus the square root of nine is three. The square root of 64 is eight. So there are my two answers for 22. Hey, let's get rid of this uh, one fourth. I'm gonna multiply this side by four. So four times one fourth b squared and four times, four times 16. All right, so we got 64 on the right side. We got b squared on the left side. I take the square root of both sides and I get plus or minus eight. All right, uh, let's see. Um, ooh. This is going to get this is going to get a little tricky because if I move the 81 to the other side, right? I got 125th x squared equals negative uh, 81, and then if I multiply both sides by 25 to get rid of this 125th, I get x squared equals. And I'd have a positive, right? But instead of doing 81 times 25, I'm going to leave it like like that. I'm going to leave it like 81 times 25. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. I'd get plus or minus. Well, the square root, uh, let's just write it down here and talk about it. I get 81 times 25 here, right? I can take the square root of them individually. So I get plus or minus 9 times 5. See, that was way better than multiplying those together and trying to figure out the square root of that. I don't have to go over to Desmos. I've got plus or minus 45, right? 9 times 5 is 45. There's my, there's my solution. Let's look at the back side of the worksheet. The back side of the worksheet, we're kind of doing, oh, geez, what is it doing here? We're kind of doing the reverse. Oh, that's weird. Oh, uh, it's kind of moving around weird. That is so weird. Why it's doing that, I don't know. I guess I'm gonna have to leave it like that. Uh, we are going to try to do the reverse. So you see the x-intercepts are, are uh, negative two and positive three. So that means my factors must have been x plus 2 and x minus 3. Now, we were saying yesterday in class that you need a particular point on the parabola. And it looks to be to be pretty ob excuse me, it looks to be pretty obvious that the y-intercept is negative 6. So let's just put down 0, negative 6 on our graph. And that would mean that you know, when y is equal to negative 6, x's are equal to 0. And I'm finding the vertical stretch. I'm finding out what I have to multiply by to fit this parabola perfectly with those two x-intercepts. So I'm going to put a 0 in for x right there. So 0 plus 2. I don't have a lot of space up here. And 0 minus 3. And I'm going to put negative 6 in for y because it's, it's just an obvious point, an easy point to use. If they gave me some other point, I probably wouldn't use it because I love zero in for X, that's super helpful. So two times negative three is negative six, so I get negative six A equals negative six. I divide both sides by negative six and I get A is equal to positive one. So really my equation was Y equals X plus two X minus three. I, I, it is a one right in front, right? If I don't put a number there, it's a one. Let's try one where it doesn't come out to be one. Right here, this is my point. I can clearly see I'm over three down two. So I'm gonna go three, negative two, and I'm gonna plug in negative two for the Y value. Oh, first let's get our, our factors. X minus two, X minus four, my factors. I don't know what the number out front needs to be, the vertical stretch or compression. And uh, I'm gonna plug the three in for X. So three minus two, three minus four, uh, I'm going to plug negative 2 in for y, and what do we get here? We get 1 times negative 1, so I get negative a equals negative 2. I divide both sides by negative 1, and a comes out to be positive 2. So I want to rewrite my equation like this, 2 times x minus 2, x minus 4, all equals y. That's my final answer right there, now that I have the correct vertical stretch, all right? Hey, let's jump down here for a second. My video is getting really lengthy. Uh, I, I want you to see, you know, if you have any questions on 27, 28. And then here, it's a little bit more, uh, how should I say, hidden. See, here are my 2x intercepts. So that would mean that I have x plus 9 as one factor and x minus 2 as another factor. 
I need to figure out the vertical stretch so that it goes through the point negative 3, negative 30. So I'm going to plug negative 3 in for x, negative 3 plus 9, negative 3 minus 2. And I'm going to plug negative 30 in for y. So this is the particular point right here, just like we had that vertex right there, or we had the y-intercept. You need a particular point to find your vertical stretch. So this gives me 6. That gives me negative 5. That would give me negative 30. So I got negative 30a equals negative 30. This is classic textbook style where we're getting a nice simple answer. So we can just erase the a over here because we know the a value is 1, right? That's how you do these problems. Thanks for watching my video. And um, I will find the rest of the answers for you nice and simple. And I'll put them up on the whiteboard if, if you want to know what, you know, if you got the correct answers. Thanks again.